One. Okay. For the final part of plate tectonics lecture, we're going to do call it tectonic expressions. We're going to be looking a little bit more detail at plate tectonic theory. If you recall from the previous lecture, this is the theory that Earth's lithosphere is broken up into a finite number of discrete plates broken into, um, and that most of the processes that shape geology are associated with the balance. Okay. That is plate tectonic theory. What we're looking at is a map of all of the major tectonic plates. Now, um, you can kind of think of this as a very fractal type situation. For those of you unfamiliar with fractal, fractal is just a um, any entity whose complexity remains constant on any scale you look at it. So, a lot common misconception people have when they look at a plate tectonic map is they assume that plate boundaries are a single line on the earth. Um, often there is a plate boundary that is, oh, most of the motion does take place in a fairly narrow zone, but the reality is what we've found over the last couple of decades is that much of what we understand as plate tectonics takes place over broader regions, and these lines that you see dividing these different tectonic plates are at best a simplification of the simplest, most consistent place to draw a single line. So there's three different ways that plates can interact with each other. I'm going to skip through these two slides. So you have divergent boundaries where plates are coming apart. You have convergent boundaries where plates are coming together. And then finally, you have um, what are known as transform boundaries, where the plates are sliding horizontally um, side by side, like we have throughout much of uh, California. Now, let's tell a little story about transform boundaries. There's more to them than meets the eye. So we're going to begin by looking at, um, we're going to look at all three of these boundaries. We're also going to look at another feature that's connected with plate tectonics, but it's not a plate boundary feature, known as a Hotspot. Hotspot over the next couple lectures for this segment of the course. Um, before we go, now before I go too deep into anything else, I wanted to, um, and we're probably just going to end this with sort of the, this sort of as an intro video. I want to end this with a uh, discussion of one other thing about plate motion. So we talked so far about how plates move with respect to another, one another. There's also a sense of absolute um, plate motion. And absolute plate motion is going to be a little different. So what we have here on this map is that absolute plate motion is going to refer to the motion of a lithospheric plate with respect to some ideal, imaginary, whatever you name it, fixed point in the Earth. Then we also have something called relative motion, which is the movement of plate relative to everything next to it. Um, and that these two are often very different entities, but it's important you start to be aware they exist and start to be thinking about them as it'll help you understand features like Hawaii and Yellowstone and other interesting features on the surface of this planet. First thing is you have, in this case, a very ideal diagram of you have three rectangular lithospheric plates, looking at them in map view. Your upper left plate is moving northward, your upper right plate is moving downward in the absolute sense, and your plate on the bottom of the screen is also moving north, but a lot slower than the upper left plate. So if the upper left plate and the lower plate are moving, um, moving in the same direction, but this one down here is moving a lot slower, these two plates over time are going to spread apart and are going to get their divergent boundary. Meanwhile, your upper right plate and lower plate are moving in the uh, moving completely opposite directions. So yes, and they're moving towards each other. So you have pure convergent motion. And then of course, because these two plates are moving opposite each other, you have beautiful transform strike slip motion. So another little story about this diagram. This is a simplification. The reality is at many tectonic plate boundaries, there is often a combination of these motions. And so some places you'll actually see 
features associated with uh, one plate boundary at a different one. But understanding them still will benefit from looking 